Hey, I'm James from Logical Increments. I'm here with Ahmed, a professional videographer and photographer, and today we're going to build his new video editing PC. So, Ahmed, what do you plan to do with this computer? So, I guess the most demanding thing that I'll be doing with this computer is um, doing some 4K video editing, mainly 1080p uh, HD video editing. But um, yeah, so that's really what I wanted to build it for. I think that this computer you spec'd out for around 15 or 1600 bucks mm -hmm. is gonna do that with no problem. So let's build this thing. Before we start building the PC, let's review the components. This is a complete list of the specs. The total cost of this build came out to $1,530. There are plenty of places where you could cut corners with these components to lower the total price, but this PC will pack a lot of power for the money, and it's tailored specifically to video editing. For the CPU, Ahmed went with the i7-5820K. The CPU is the central part of any video editing PC, and it is by far the most important component. The 5820K is a high-performance 6-core hyper-threaded processor. Based on tests, a 6-core CPU seems to be the sweet spot for video editing in terms of price for performance. For the video card, Ahmed picked out the Asus Radeon R9 380X. When it comes to video editing, your video card is actually a much less important component than your CPU. It's important to have a video card, but it's not that important that the card be especially powerful. In this case, Ahmed went with a high mid-range video card, which will allow his computer to also play PC games extremely well, and it'll also ensure that any GPU-heavy video projects get rendered extra fast. For the motherboard, we've got the Asus X99A. This is a fantastic X99 motherboard to go with our Socket 2011 CPU and DDR4 RAM. With eight RAM slots, this PC could support 64 or even 128 gigabytes of RAM, so Ahmed may consider upgrading his RAM in the future. And we've started with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, which is a decent amount for video editing, even at 4K resolution. If Ahmed feels like things could be faster, upgrading the RAM could help. At 32 gigabytes, we'd likely see a 15 to 20 percent improvement in rendering times. At 64 gigabytes, we'd probably see closer to a 30 percent improvement. So after he's worked with this PC for a little while, he may decide that the extra RAM is going to be worth it. For our storage, we've started with a Samsung 850 Evo SSD and a 4 terabyte HGST hard drive. When it comes to editing video footage, there isn't a huge performance difference when you're sourcing the footage from an SSD versus a hard drive. The SSD will be used to install the operating system and important programs like editing software, and the hard drive will be available to store footage and documents. This modular Corsair RM850 power supply will provide more than enough power for the system, and it will be efficient and quiet. For the CPU cooler, we have a Corsair H55, a nice basic liquid cooler. This will give Ahmed the ability to overclock his CPU without worrying about heat or noise. And finally, for the case, we have the NZXT Phantom 410, a quiet, sleek case with plenty of room for everything. And now it's time to build the PC. First, we're going to get out our motherboard and place it on top of the box. Next, we'll unlatch the CPU socket cover and get ready for our CPU. The CPU has a little triangle in one corner, so we want to make sure we line that up with the triangle on the motherboard and drop it in pretty easily. Then the latch should close and easily secure the CPU. Next we'll install our RAM, but first we'll check our motherboard manual to see the best configuration for our two sticks. Here we see that the sticks should go in slots B1 and D1. This will be different on every motherboard, so make sure you check your manual for your proper configuration. To install the RAM, we'll simply open the latches and firmly place the RAM into the slots. With our CPU and RAM installed in the motherboard, it's time to start putting things in the case. First, we'll install the motherboard's input-output shield. That simply gets snapped into place in the back of the case. Next, we're going to lay the case down flat and screw in our motherboard standoffs. We'll place the motherboard on top of these to secure it in the case. Be especially certain that you've lined up all of these standoffs according to the screw holes in your motherboard. This is one of those areas where you can easily fry your motherboard with a misplaced standoff. Or if, like some people who have learned the really hard way, you forget to install your standoffs in the first place. 
With the standoffs in place, we'll now put in our motherboard, which should fit snugly with the I.O. shield. Next, we'll secure the motherboard by screwing it into the standoffs. We'll also take this opportunity to connect our case to our motherboard, starting with the front panel USB 3.0 ports. We'll also connect our front panel power and reset buttons and case LEDs. And before we plug in our case fans, we're gonna move them around a little bit. Because we have a liquid CPU cooler, we want to put its intake on the rear of the PC. So we're gonna move the rear fan up to the top of the PC and then install the CPU cooler. Fans at the back of the case are usually for exhaust, but we'll be doing intake with our cooler fan to draw in cool air over the radiator, and then we'll use the two case fans to exhaust warm air upwards out of the case. With the fan moved out of the way, we'll attach the cooler to the top of the CPU. And this cooler came with thermal paste pre-applied, so we don't have to apply any ourselves. Also, be sure to check your cooler's manual for instructions on proper installation for your CPU socket. After the cooler is secured to the CPU socket, we'll install the radiator to the rear of the case. And then we'll plug it all in. Next up is installing the power supply at the bottom of the case. And before we start connecting the power, we'll install our hard drive and our SSD. Then we'll connect the drives with serial ATA data cables, which connect to the motherboard. And our power connections, which connect to the power supply. Now back on the other side, you can see us plugging in the data cables and the power cables. Next, we'll plug in the motherboard power and our CPU power. And finally, it's time to install the video card. First, we'll remove two of the back case plates, and then, kind of like with the RAM, we'll place it firmly in the top PCIe slot, and then we screw it in. Next is the power for the graphics card, and that's everything. We're ready to turn this thing on and see if it actually works. Holding our breath, hitting the power button, and... Success! We now have a functional video editing computer. First, a big thanks to Ahmed for letting us film the building of his PC. You can check out his work at zincphoto.com. For more information on how to design your own video editing PC, check our links in the video description below. And if you want to see more videos on PC hardware, think about subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.